Hello everyone, this is Mumbo here, welcome back, and today I am here to show you how to use Adobe After Effects effectively. Now I wasn't planning on doing one of these, but it was so heavily requested on both the Mumbo Jumbo channel and obviously things in nutshells that I thought why not just give it a shot, it can only go badly. And uh, here I am now. So I'm sure all of you have seen the Minecraft 2.0 in a nutshell video, it went down incredibly well and I'm glad that you all enjoyed it. So, uh, most of the responses to it were very good, about 50% of them were asking how do you edit like that, how can I learn how to animate like you, and um, I'm hopefully going to, you know, give you a good impression as to what I do. Now the main thing that you need to learn about After Effects is that it's not easy, it's not like Windows Movie Maker where you can drag like a transition onto a piece of text and then it will do it all for you, it's not going to do any of that. After Effects works via keyframes, but before we get into any of that kind of thing, I need you to have a basic understanding of Adobe After Effects. I cannot start from the bottom and tell you exactly what to do because I would be here for hours, literally hours, especially if I keep rambling on like I am doing now. So what I want you to do is go over to videocopilot.net, it's a fantastic website for After Effects, and click on their basic training series, and that will tell you everything you need to know about After Effects, what everything does, all of the modules, all of the different effects that you can apply, all of the different keyframes that you can do, and then head over back onto this video and give it a watch, and hopefully you will get more from it if you actually have the understanding in the first place. So in today's video we are going to try and create the impression of movement via keyframes and various things like that, motion blur and all that kind of great stuff. But before we start I just want to show you a preview of the kind of thing that you can create when you have this technique down to a T. So this is for the next video that I'm going to be putting up on Nutshells, it's going to be an 8.2 second preview of a video called The Minecraft Experience and this is what I've got for you. Now it may be a little bit loud because I haven't really set up all my recording software properly yet but here we go. Yeah, come on. So there it is. Eight seconds. That's all and that took a very long time to do but you can see that a lot of the things have various different motion going on. So especially with the Minecraft experience, you can see that it bounces down, then comes back up, and then the two, the and the experience also kind of zoom in and then bounce back to their original position. And that is what we're gonna be learning in today's episode. It doesn't sound too difficult, but you know, you need to know these kind of things. So we're kicking things off with a brand new composition. There's nothing in here other than our orange soddle, orange soddle, orange solid, which just looks bright and nice and cheery. And then we also have the mumbo jumbo text, which is in the Alcina font. Now you guys really love this font in the Minecraft 2.0 video. So there it is, it's called Alcina and you can pick it up from defont.com if you want it. Now what we're gonna be playing around with is the scale and position keyframes, cause those are the general transitions that I use. So if we press S on our keyboard, it will come up with scale down below here. You can see that our font is at scale factor 645%. Now what we're going to do is keyframe this so we get it to zoom in and then spring back a little bit. So what we want to do is hit the scale keyframe there. Now that is a keyframe for 645%. You can see it right there and it even says when it is. Now if we drag this along, you'll see that it's still 645% but it will happen at 0.03 yeah, seconds into the video. And then all you have to do is just set this to zero and that will automatically make a keyframe and immediately we have motion, we technically have a transition, it's not there and now it is. Simple as that. But what if you want to make this look a little bit cooler, a little bit more interesting? Well, you go dead in the middle and you make the scale bigger than you want it to be at the end. Now that's a little bit of an odd sentence, I know, but you'll see that we, we have the zoom in and then it kind of bounces back. And that makes it look more realistic and also a little bit more interesting. Now if you want to make that even better, then you apply motion blur by clicking on this one here and then apply the motion blur there and you can see that it really does look a whole bunch cooler. So if we hit the RAM preview button, you can see there it is. It's as simple as that. We've pretty much created something interesting from nothing and it took what, a minute? If you get good at After Effects, that takes about two seconds because you can just flick on and just do all of that. Now if you want to make this even more interesting, it's getting a little bit more technical now. 
is you can hold alt and click on this keyframe button under position and then you type in wiggle oh two g's l e two comma ten like that and you will see that now our text will kind of wobble around on the screen now this is a very small touch but you'll see it happen all the time in my videos because it keeps things animated it keeps things moving and generally speaking it keeps them interesting so here is the ram preview you can see it pops in and then wobbles around on the screen and that's already interesting enough and I don't know, I just quite like the way that that looks. So now that we've taken a look at the scale, how about we take a look at the position. So if you just hit P, the position menu will come up like that. And you can see that our text is red. That is just because we've got the wiggle on there. It won't be like that if you don't have the wiggle. And then all you have to do is click on the keyframe button there. And once again, it will create that little keyframe right down there that says we want the position to be 973.5 by 585 at the time of like 1.9 seconds or something like that. So that is our keyframe and then if we go slightly further along and just drag this off the screen you'll see that it just kind of falls out the screen and already we have a mediocre transition. It's alright, it's nothing too exciting, no, not thrilling, definitely not groundbreaking but it does the job. If you want it to look a little bit cooler then all you have to do is just go roughly in the middle and just drag this up so that it kind of bounces upwards before going down and then it looks a whole bunch better. It looks more realistic and more interesting. And that is pretty much all you need to know. If we take a look at this little animation that we've created here, you can see our text scales in and then bumps out. That's interesting. It wiggles around while it's on there. It keeps your attention. And if you do that with various things in your composition, then you'll have a decent looking one in no time. So I think that's all I'm going to cover in today's episode. That's pretty much all you need to know as far as transitions and scaling go. You can do this with objects, not just text. So you saw in my little preview that I did it with the hills in the background and the nutshell as well. So it all looks good. And that is the basics. That is what I use throughout all of my work. It's a it's a constant, basically. It's a constant throughout all of the things that I create. It always has that kind of thing in there. So if you did enjoy this video, make sure to hit that like button. And if you really did love it, then make sure to subscribe. But thanks for watching, guys. This has been Mumbo, and I'm out. I'll see you later.